What's up, nerds? My name is Paul. I don't know why I have to touch my chest when I say that. I have had many of these. I got rusty in making my own show, which happens. But anyway, I'm back. And I just filmed maybe 75% of an episode with my microphone turned off. Luckily halfway, like as I started pouring, I was like, oh, the mic microphone <laughs> turned off and it was. So all the good work that I did out the window. But anyway, I'm back. I have a new job now so I can fund making this show. I haven't made any money on this show. That's fine because I, you know, I love doing the show. I, this is maybe one of the, my favorite things that I do. You know, when I was originally doing the show, I didn't have a job and I thought, hey, maybe I'll take a swing and make it my own TV show, like make my own YouTube show. And uh, it didn't work out that way, but I, it was kind of got me through a kind of a hard time in my life and now that I'm in a better time in my life why couldn't I like take a good time in my life and make it even better by bringing back the show because I really love doing it so um, this episode we're gonna make a Moscow mule in this guy I mean I could just be like we're making this and you see the copper cup and automatically know it's a Moscow mule but uh, we're making the Moscow mule because it is my good friend Michael Berardi's favorite drink and I know that because I walked up to Michael Berardi at a party and I was like uh, hey Michael, what's your favorite drink? And he was like, uh, I guess the Moscow Mule. And I was like, cool. And then wandered off. Cause that's, that's how we talk to each other. So we're gonna be making this one. This one is based off of the Moscow Mule that they make at the Mandrake uh, in Los Angeles. Where it is exactly, cause I always go straight there. And it's in Los Angeles. I'm not gonna tell you exactly where because I don't want you blowing up my spot. Even though I haven't been there in like months. <laughs> Yeah, so the way this one works is usually you use ginger ale or ginger beer, but I'm going to be using a ginger syrup so that you get a lot more of that spice from the ginger and then, you, you know, just vodka and lime juice and all that stuff. So it's a Moscow Mule, so it kicks, which is the way it should be. The Moscow Mule, I think, was invented in California. I'm pretty sure it was. I think it was invented in Hollywood. I probably should have done more research, but I was more excited and just doing my show again. I, I love the, doing the show. It's the most fun I have. So yeah, to make this we are gonna need an ounce and a half of vodka, which is my new well bottle. I don't know why every time I say well bottle, it sounds like whale bottle. Maybe it's part of the Southern California accent, but it's a well bottle. I made these for the show. What I did is I like boiled the labels off of these regular bottles and then pinned it with a chalkboard paint so that I could write in chalk like what it is so I could be, write like vodka or for like this one I could write gin. But there was a really good way to get all that gunk off and I forgot what it was because you know, I've had, I think this is my third Moscow Mule and my fourth shot. I have a liver of a champion. It was oil, that's what you do. I rubbed it down with the oil so that it wouldn't keep sticking. I think it was coconut oil. I don't know. Anyway, back to the drink and back to Michael Berardi, who is a really cool guy. But uh, me and Michael have known each other from, uh, no, 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 no. Let's, let's not do Michael Berardi, let's do the ingredients for this drink. The people that are watching this show isn't, aren't, isn't, God, I'm a fucking moron, aren't confused on how to make this thing. So you're gonna need vodka, you're gonna need club soda, you're gonna need uh, ginger syrup. You can probably buy ginger syrup, I made it from scratch because usually that's better. And because I'm making a show, why not just make it from scratch? Uh, what I did was, you know, I looked up a recipe for it online. Because I want the bite from the ginger, I increased the ginger. I increased ginger a lot. I bought like a pound and a half of ginger and then just the recipes usually say to like thinly slice it. I just like I tried doing that once and it just ended up too sweet. So what I did is I just like peeled a pound and a half of ginger like as much as I could. I usually just broke off the little nubbins and just did the main body. You know took that, peeled it up, put it in my blender. I probably should wash that blender because I don't think I did. Same ratio so I did a cup of sugar, a cup of water and then put as much ginger as I could and then just blended it all up until it was smooth and then I boiled that for like I feel like an hour you know kind of boil out all that ginger spice and then I put it through a pasta strainer you know so that the solid matter would just clump out and then it was still pretty watery so I uh, heated it up and then had it cook for like another 45 minutes just to get it more to a syrupy kind of texture which is now it's nice and spicy now and then uh, lime juice. The lime juice is probably going to mute that spice and that's kind of what I don't want. So I would just say a splash of lime juice. Where I left off, I already did an ounce and a half of vodka. So we're gonna pretend like I just did that. And then splash vodka. And magically, we're, you saw a splash of vodka. And then we're gonna do, uh, you're gonna do an ounce of the syrup. 
And then we're just gonna do like a small spa splash of the lime juice. Oop. And then we're gonna put this on here and we're gonna shake it up. Then we take this guy, we're gonna fill it halfway with ice. And then we're gonna take the club soda and we're gonna fill that also halfway. It's gonna be the same kind of deal that you do with all my other kind of fizzy drinks. And then you strain it into this guy. You show off like an asshole. Pretty damn good. Honestly, I might omit the lime at all. I mean, totally, just cause I love the spice. <laughs> and just to not mute it at all. You guys didn't think I'd know that my mustache was all fucked up, but I figured it out cause I went to the bathroom. Anyway, Michael Barrett was a cool guy. I remember I was on a bus. He was at elementary school and I was on a bus. You know, a bus full of kids. And his dad comes onto the bus cause he's picking up Michael and he's like, hey, you know, when you're parked here, it's really hard for people like to see around you and like to hit the turn and you know, this and that. And the bus driver just starts yelling at him for like 10 minutes of being like, hey, well, I don't know where else I'm supposed to park and blah, 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 and this and this and that. And the other Michael Barrett's dad is just like sitting there be like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then just goes like well you know just a thought and then just leaves the bus <laughs> I think that was the first time I ever saw his dad <laughs> also the first time the earliest member I have of his mom is his mom and my mom like sitting on a picnic blanket because it was like you know one of the days in elementary like they didn't teach us in elementary school but so it was one of the element days in elementary school where uh, like it was like a picnic day so it was her talking about Michael's like yeah Michael's a great kid but he refuses to eat fast food. I understand it is great, but also is kind of a pain in the ass. So yeah, those are my earliest memories of Michael's parents. Is his dad getting yelled at by the bus driver and being like, you know, just a thought. And his mom complaining that like Michael is the original hipster and refuses to eat fast food. Super great guy. Well, he'll tell you that he is a, he has an A-type personality. I feel like I'm not talking about Michael enough. A muff uh, enough. Michael's great. Super giving guy. It's just gonna, he just works. And he's great. If you're a lady, try to fuck Michael Barity. Uh, one time I looked up how much money Michael Barity has. Because why not? Like, cause, you know, you can like look up net worth of people. Uh, I don't know how I got there, but it was like, I think I like Googled Michael Barity and like one of the links was like, Michael Barity net worth. I was like, I want to know how much money Michael Barity has. And the, like, it was like this really weird sketchy website, but it said like Michael Barity net worth $7 million, which like is the funniest amount of money I've ever heard in my whole life. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now, Michael does not have $7 million. <laughs> And they tried to like explain away how he has seven million dollars that doesn't make sense i like to think that michael just like lives with a roommate like has seven million dollars but still like lives with alex as a roommate like still drives the car that he drives he just like sits on it he just like yeah like he could still i, I was talking to him about it it's like, like michael you could give me a million dollars and you would still have six million dollars <laughs> Oh, I know the story I want to tell. So every year, all my close friends, although I forgot to do it for my friend Bobby. Hey Bobby, how's it going? I'll call you tomorrow. Every year I call my friends on their birthday. It just turned into a thing that I do where I call them on their phone on, my, on their birthdays and leave them like rambly stream of com consciousness, like comedy me like messages for their birthdays that they all love, which I, which I love, that they love these messages. But for Michael, it turned into me uh, pretending to be his mom <laughs> and complaining that he doesn't give her grandkids. The last one I sent him for his birthday this year, I was like, like Michael, you know what? <laughs> it's like 30 years old you know what Michael no more condoms you're not allowed to wear condoms anymore you get a girl pregnant you marry her all right I want some grandkids Michael maybe the second year I did this like I called up Michael to, like and he answered but usually they save it for voice posts so they can listen to it later I think he was in the car and he answered it and I started being his mom and it was like and <laughs> so I was like it's like Michael this is your mother and Michael was like I hate this bit <laughs> Which, as a rule of comedy, when somebody says this isn't funny anymore, it's when it's at its funniest. And like that's when I got Michael onto that bit. Cause like a little bit after that, I think Michael, like this year, I think Michael was saying, he was talking about Spider-Man home Homecoming. He was like, this is my favorite Spider-Man to date. And then so I just on Twitter was like, how long have you guys been dating? Is it serious? Spider-Man, is that Jewish? This is your mother, Michael. And then Michael fell in love with the bit because it always begins and ends with this is your mother. <laughs> yeah, my show's back. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to make as many episodes as possible. You know, I love you to death. I'm super glad that I'm back and that you're back watching me. If you stuck with the Twitter, I'll put a link to my Twitter, but if you, in the intermedium, I was doing a drink a day. So maybe I'll start doing some of those drinks. 
down in the comments below. Totally uh, give me like drinks you want me to do and I'll absolutely do them. And we'll just have a fun time with it. And I'll see you guys later. I love you to death.